Hey guys, welcome to Modeling Insanity TV. I'm Rob Ribb and I want to thank everybody for tuning in. On this first installment of the Photo Etch 101 How To Series, we'll be making workable hinges in 135th scale. It's not as hard as some may think, and with the right tools and the right technique, you'll be making these hinges as quickly as gluing two pieces of plastic together. Well, almost. The biggest hurdle making this video was how small the parts were, and because of this, I needed to use my macro lens in my camera and build the parts while looking at my monitor, as you can see in this picture. So to begin this tutorial, I'm going to show a quick preview of what's to come. First, I'm going to show how to bend the photo etch hinge using a photo etch bender and plier. Then I'll show how to make the hinge using some metal wire and chisel blades. I then give a quick crash course on soldering, showing how to attach the hinges to brass mug guards and fenders. I then show how to make smaller hinges used on turret baskets and larger tank fenders. I then attach some of the hinges on a turret basket cover and end the tutorial by showing the hinges in action. So let's get started. Okay, the first hinge we're gonna make is the most common type of hinge. This particular one will be used on the mug guard of a Panzer III. So to begin, we're first gonna take the hinges and create an L-shaped bend to them. Here I'm making the shape in both the photo etch bender from the spay and a flat nose plier. You can use either. Using a chisel blade or a straight razor in the photo etch bender, or your finger on the flat nose ply will do the trick. Once the bends are made, put them in place on the tape and interlock them together, making sure they are firmly stuck to the tape. This way they will not move when making the hinge. Then place the wire in the channel between the two halves, while also allowing the extra wire to stick to the tape on either side. This will keep the wire from moving. Using a number 11 X-Acto blade or pointed tweezer, Bend the flaps of the hinges over and around the wire. When bending the flaps of the hinges, make sure to bend it completely over the wire to where it's almost touching the base of the other hinge. Now using a pointed tweezer, push the overlap part of the flap further around the wire, ensuring that it's wrapped around as much as possible. Once the flaps of the hinges are wrapped around the wire fully, I then take the back side of a number 18 large chisel and put it on one side of the hinge, acting as a support. And then use a number 17 small chisel blade to push the hinge flaps under the wire, creating a round shape and completing the hinge on that side. Then turn the hinges around and repeat the process by supporting the hinge on the back side and using the small chisel blade pushing the flaps of the hinges under and around the wire completely. Once the hinge flaps on both sides are wrapped around fully, we will use the chisel blades to straighten out the hinge if necessary by applying just a little bit of pressure on both sides. This is the finished hinge. We test it out to see if there are any issues bending or manipulating it. This one bends perfectly and is complete. I decided to make another larger hinge for this video from a slightly higher vantage point. Here we follow the same steps as we did with the smaller hinge. First make the L-shaped bends, then interlock the two hinges on the tape, and then insert the wire between them. Then as you see here, use the X-Acto blade to bend the flaps over and around the wire, followed by pointed tweezers to tighten them up. Then again use the number 17 small chisel blade and the back side of the 18 large chisel blade and tuck the flaps under the wire completing the hinge. Then cut the wire. And just like that, we have another workable hinge. Now we're going to first attach the hinge to the brass mud guards. Here I'm applying some liquid flux to the parts using a disposable brush. I then apply the .05 solder directly to the soldering iron, in this case a 35 watt weller. Solder is dipped into a cup of flux to allow it to adhere to the soldering iron. You can use CA glue for this, but I always believe it's better to attach brass parts using solder. I then hold the hinge to the mud guard and ensure it's lined up properly. Using a little solder, I tack the hinge in place. This way, if it's not straight, it could be removed easily. Once I know that the hinge is in the right position, I add a little more solder to it. I then add some flux to the other side and then apply more solder and spread it out with the soldering iron. But this is a quick crash course in soldering as I plan on doing a whole series of videos dedicated to just soldering brass parts or soldering for my Australian and other friends who give me a hard time calling it solder. 
but here on Long Island, we call it solder. All right, now that we attach the hinge to the mudguard, I make sure the hinge is still workable. I then sand down the excess solder from the mudguard, followed by a fiberglass pen by AK to clean up and buff out the brass. Just a little pressure on the brush and it will clean up any solder or flux residue with no issue. With the hinge attached to the mudguard, I then attach the other side of the hinge to the photo etch fender. I first apply some liquid flux to the outside of the hinge and fender using a disposable brush. I then hold the hinge in place with an X-Acto blade and apply just a small amount of solder tacking it in place. I then follow the same process for the other side. First apply the flux, then add the solder to the soldering iron by first dipping it in the flux and then applying a small amount of solder to the parts. Off camera, I cleaned up the solder from the fender and the hinge using a number 11 X-Acto blade and the AK fiberglass brush. Here you see the perfect workable mudguard. Now I'm going to show how to make these hinges seen here on the turret basket hatch and on the front and rear of the King Tiger and Tiger 1. These hinges are a little easy to make in my opinion and I made these by cutting some K&S brass sheet into strips and cut it to size. First you will need to make an L-shaped bend in the photo etch bender or flat nose plier like we did with the previous hinges. With the hinge properly attached to the tape, we add the wire ensuring that the sides are also stuck on the tape. Using the X-Acto blade, we bend the flap over and around the wire. Once it's around, we use the number 17 and number 18 chisel blades again and push the flap fully around the wire from underneath. You can see here, if the parts ever come off the tape, that once you remove the wire, the hinge is perfectly made. I then make the other side of the hinge using the same process. Making the L-shaped bend, adding the wire and ensuring it's stuck to the tape, bending the flap over and around the wire, then using the chisel blades to complete the hinge. With both hinges now made, I add the wire and test it out. And just like the other hinges, they work perfectly. Now for video purposes, I'm test fitting the homemade hinges that were made just to see if they fit to the pre-made cutouts on the Ryfield Models turret hatch, which they thankfully do. And that's pretty much it for this first how-to tutorial in the Photo Etch 101 series, and I hope it was helpful. And to end this video, I'm going to show the workable hinges in action. All the details of the products used during this tutorial will be in the description below. Also, like, share, and subscribe. Hit that notification bell so you don't miss a video, and we appreciate the support. Also, you can listen to me as well as my fellow co-hosts on the Modeling Insanity podcast, which you can find on Spotify, Apple, Amazon, and other podcast hosting companies as well as the Quarter Scale Madness podcast, which focuses on everything 148 scale and quarter scale models. I hope this tutorial was helpful, and as always, feel free to message me anytime on my Facebook modeling page at Rob Rivs Modeling Insanity. I appreciate everybody watching, and look out for more build and tutorial videos in the weeks to come. <laughs>